Every year I see dozens of credit card offers. With all of these offers, I generally dismiss all of them after a quick comparison. I always go back to my PenFed Power Cash Rewards card. I dismiss most of them because I know what I'm looking for. I am always on the lookout for a better credit card to run my transactions through and receive a nice cashback reward at the end of the month. Not only do I want a cashback reward, I don't want any gimmicks or annoying hoops to jump through to get my cashback rewards. I want simplicity. And yet, year after year, I have stuck with my PenFed Power Cash Rewards card. I have not yet found a cashback card offer enticing enough for me to change or to try out. Let, let me, me explain, explain to you why. why. First, let me say this is not a sponsored video. PenFed is not paying me or doing me any special favors to make this video, but they, they probably, probably should. should. PenFed, if you want to sponsor any future videos about your credit card, feel free to reach out to me. You have my info. I make this video because I think there are a lot of over-promoted, gimmicky, and BS credit cards out there. I've been around the block. I've used credit cards as a financial tool since I was in my 20s. I know some people are big fans of point reward cards. I am not one of those people. They have always felt a bit icky to me and a lot of people get confused by the whole point system thing, which can vary a lot from one credit card to another. For me, a cashback rewards program is much more simpler, direct, and straightforward. You don't have to be a points expert to use and learn the system. I also like the fact that I earn residual cash for simply paying my bills and expenses with my credit card. The PenFed Power Cash Rewards card is an understated card that doesn't have much glitz or glamour to it. The card itself is not sexy. It isn't silver, it's not gold, platinum, or black. It's a navy blue Visa card with white lettering. Nothing about this card conveys any kind of social status that you are wealthy, rich, or a financial cool kid. This card tells everyone that you are a mere mortal. So let me start off by saying, if social status through a credit card is important to you, this, this card, card isn't, isn't it. it. You won't see any TV ads or any glitzy commercials for PenFed. You won't see this card promoted on very many financial websites. In fact, PenFed and the way they operate is in many ways opposite of Bank of America, Chase, Capital One, Wells Fargo, and other high-profile big-name banks. The central reason why I like the PenFed Power Cash Rewards card is I get a 2% cash back on everything I purchase. It is easy and straightforward to me. That means whether it is restaurants, gas, travel, utilities, groceries, insurance, my Amazon orders, medical, or any other category you can think of, it is 2% cash back to me. I don't have to think about which card I need to use or when to use it for the best cash back reward. It's all the same throughout the year. The PenFed cash back card is my main card for everything. And if I ever hit an unexpected glitch, I do have a backup card. I never want to be manipulated into spending more money in any category or store because the credit card company wants me to. For example, Venmo keeps sending me an offer to apply to their credit card. They advertise up to 3% cash back until you read the fine print. There are eight categories you have to select from. You only get a 3% cash back in one category. They offer 2% cash back on a second category Everything else is a measly 1%. So the marketing gimmick to lure you is the 3% cash back, but they are pigeonholing you to one narrow category. The 2% and 1% tiers means nothing to me because I already get 2% on everything through PenFed. I don't come out ahead under the Venmo card. If anything, I think I will come out behind. Any gains I make on the 3% category is more than offset by the awful 1% remainder. In fact, if you pay attention, the majority of most people's expenses will end up in the awful 1% category. That is a marketing gimmick to trick you into using their cashback rewards program. Now another example of a marketing gimmick is Discover Card that lures people by advertising a 5% cashback. However, they manipulate you to spending money in certain categories based on the calendar month. I don't know about you, 
I have standard expenses that recur month after month. I rarely have any expense category that is isolated to any particular month. As I make this video, they are currently promoting their 5% cash back at restaurants and wholesale clubs until June. To me, it is meaningless because I am not a big fan of eating out that much and I shop at wholesale clubs year round, not just May and June. Am I going to allow myself to be manipulated by Discover into eating out more and blow my food budget just for a 5% cash back? I don't think so. Am I going to be manipulated into buying more at a wholesale club for that additional 5% cash back? The answer is no, absolutely not. It is obnoxious to me that I have to think so much about where, what time of year, and what category I should shop. I don't like that. Also, I have no idea what the next 5% cashback reward category will be until Discover announces it. That 5% cashback is a small slice of your overall expenses. With Discover Cashback, the fine print tells you that everything else that falls outside of the qualifying purchase is an awful 1% cashback. That, that is, is what, what I, I consider, consider a BS marketing gimmick. gimmick. And quite honestly, there are many cashback credit card offers that use this BS gimmicks and that that is why I dismiss them entirely. I know what to look for in the fine print. What I'm looking for are straight percentage cashback rewards for all purchases. To me, it is more direct, straightforward, and consistent. Speaking of being direct, straightforward, and consistent, my cat Lexi wants me to ask you to swipe that like button to help to spread the word of this video. She will greatly appreciate it because it will help our channel out. And she gets a special bonus treat if you subscribe to this channel. As it relates to the PenFed's Power Cash Rewards Card, the core cashback program pays 1.5%, but you get an extra 0.5% if you are a member of the military or you maintain a $500 minimum balance in a PenFed checking account. That gives you the full 2% cashback. Now, in my last video about the PenFed Cashback Rewards Card, Someone commented that having to open a PenFed checking account and keeping $500 in it was a gimmick. I don't see it that way. You get a 1.5% cashback on all purchases by default unless you are a member of the military, in which case you get the full 2%. But if you are not a military member and want to earn the full 2%, you open a PenFed checking account and put $500 in it. Now I understand that keeping a $500 balance is difficult for a lot of people on tighter budgets. But even if you can't maintain the $500 minimum balance, it is not the end of the world. You will still get your 1.5% cash back for those months. If it means anything to you, I don't use PenFed as my main check -in account at all. It is an idle account so I can get my full 2% cash back. It is well worth it to me because of the volume of transactions I run through my credit card. However, you have to look at your own situation to decide if this is really worthwhile to you. One of the things I like about PenFed's credit card cashback system are their reports. It is very straightforward to see how much cashback you are getting with every transaction every month. Another thing I like about PenFed's cashback reward system is that it gives you multiple ways to redeem the cash rewards. At the simplest level, you can set rewards to automatically redeem every month. You can have cash rewards be directly applied to your monthly balance or transferred to a checking or savings account of your choice. I generally prefer to redeem my rewards manually. I like to let it build up and periodically redeem it by transferring the bulk amount to a checking account. I do this very intentionally so I have a better feel of how much cash rewards I am getting. If I automatically redeem it into my statement, the cash reward tends to get lost in my list of monthly transactions. Now as a long time user of the PenFed Power Cash Rewards card, I can also tell you about some of the downsides of PenFed that isn't talked about. The most annoying part of dealing with PenFed is that its online banking is unfriendly to some accounting and financial tracking software. That means you cannot automatically download or sync those PenFed transactions to certain programs. And I don't like it. 
for me and my fiance, PenFed's inability to sync transactions with certain programs is a big negative strike. She stopped using her PenFed cashback card and went back to her previous card because her transactions would not automatically download into her financial tracking program. PenFed, if, if you, you are, are listening, listening this, this needs, needs to be, to be fixed. fixed. Now for me, I use a workaround. I periodically do a manual download and then upload the transactions to my accounting program. But I know that is not practical for most people nowadays. Another thing I don't like about the PenFed credit card system is the substandard integration with its overall online banking. Now on the surface, it looks integrated, but it really isn't as far as I can see. It is a bit disjointed. Their online credit card system feels like it has been pieced together and tacked on to their online banking system. To see details of my transactions, I find the newer interface to be prettier, but less informative. In fact, I don't even use it. I prefer to use their older interface to see the details of my transactions. Now, PenFed has improved their online credit card system over the last couple of years, but it's still a bit slow, sluggish, and awkward as far as I'm concerned. Another strike about PenFed comes from my bias as a business owner. PenFed's credit card system doesn't allow you to set closing dates to the last day of the month. Now, because I do accounting by calendar month, I prefer to have most of my statements close at the last day of the month, like my bank statements do. The closest I can set the statement closing date is either the 26th of the month or the 2nd of the month, but, but not, not the, the last, last day of the month. month. Another thing you need to know is PenFed can sometimes get busy when you call into customer service, but I am happy to say that they are generally friendly. I rarely encounter a rude customer service person. That counts for something. Now, if you want to know what I consider my best savings account for 2023, you want to go click on this video. And if you have a flat rate cashback card that pays 2% or more, I want to hear from you. Please do me a favor and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.